Okay. A mi to fo. 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 Thank you for um, hosting and uh, participating in another session of uh, treaties on response and retributions lecture version. So this version uh, and uh, and the version we have with youth group is slightly different in terms of uh, discussion and all that. This version I will do my best to give more content uh, in parallel with the discussion focused youth group session. So it will be. Uh, the change, not changes, the pacing will be almost the same as the youth group. Uh, we'll repeat what the youth group has done last week and uh, we'll, we'll continue from there because we kind of end at, at the right spot anyway. So today, uh, as we can see here in the screen, share screen, we will continue on section three, uh, crimes and offense. It will not go away anytime soon. So we're going to take it really slow one by one. Uh, and this is the part two. Right, part two of this section three. So, if you remember part one, we talk about, uh, um, you know, the thoughts, the power of thoughts, and how thoughts, um, if it's not in accordance to our conscience, if it's not fair and reasonable, then we don't do it. Uh, and then the challenge is in knowing what is fair, what is reasonable, what is not, uh, and how you balance against your own interests against the public good. You know, this kind of. <clears throat> um, H.O. questions, you know, like others first or your first, you know, put others before you and how do you actually practice it? <clears throat> Why is it important to do that? So today we'll continue from that line of thoughts, you know, um, know what is right, what is wrong and how to, how should we act or how should we not act? Uh, so here in the uh, part two of the Taishang Gai Ying Pian, I'll use the Chinese Yi part two of the Taishang uh, treaties of treaties, we start with this um, topic, transgression easily committed by people with authority. So this is a very um, big thing uh, happens, no matter which era you're in. As long as you have hierarchies, you have peoples up and now there, there is this, um, uh, how to say, ongoing you, uh, revolving issues of people abusing their power, abusing their the trust of others. Um, most importantly, they are you know, plunge into that position or rise to the top and then they somehow, you know, being blinded by their own desires. When you say they are, I mean, we, we might be the same, you know, like if we put it in their place, if we don't have enough cultivation. Um, so the whole point is reflection, self-reflection. So every one of us, one day will be in charge of someone or something, some organization. Doesn't matter... Um, you know, uh, whether you actually become the boss, become a CEO, become a manager, or even a parent, you're in charge of your children. You are in authority, in a sense. Or your carers, guardians, taking care of your um, uh, youngest, uh, like as a teacher, you are uh, have a duty of care to your students. Same thing. So it doesn't matter where you are, you will be in that position. And so this is something we all need to think about. We all need to be aware of and prevent so, without further ado, we'll begin with the first um, part of it. We'll take it slower. We'll dig into the stories um, given by the um, uh, annotations on the treaties. We'll make it more relevant, and then we'll move at that kind of pace. So, first we read the original text in Chinese, 是非不当, and then in English, to consider evil to be just and good to be evil. So just from the first sentence, we already know mixing up, you know, um, swapping, you know, <clears throat> upside down. What is right becomes uh, was said to be wrong. What is wrong becomes right. What is wrong was being uh, covered up as being as being righteous. So this is <clears throat> this is like uh, a big problem nowadays, especially in high or high places when you're in group of people with you know 
huge wealth influence and all that easily. Um, there's a saying in Chinese, uh, pointing at the deer, but keep yelling, it is a host. So it's a very common term. Why? Because this story goes by, like I, I don't know, like someone in Imperial Court or something, and everyone's trying to um, suck up to the um, high ups, the emperors. And so when emperors say, this is a horse, even though it's actually a deer, everyone's like, yes, it's a horse, it's a horse. Basically, that's the kind of um, situation. So from there, we can extrapolate when, you know, in terms of, you know, handling daily affairs, handling um, the nation level, like, you know, defense or uh, jurist, uh, uh, law, legal matters, stuff like that. Um, without a right uh, standard, then it, it's easy to be, um, how to say, it's, it's easy for a country to be so corrupted and, um, and uh, given the message that, you know, uh, as long as you have money, if influence, you can do anything. So this is the kind of a society we don't want to live in, right? We want to live in a society where it's fair, relatively fair, relatively reasonable, um, so that we can you know, have a good life. <clears throat> Everyone have a good life. So it's important in the macro level, big level. So if we look at the actual annotation, what do they say? It's quite simple, actually. It's just like when someone is doing something is obviously not good, then we just say it's not good or we don't agree with it. We don't condone it. You know, don't condone something that is obviously not good. Uh, just because it's funny, just because it looks like a joke, uh, just because it's amusing, entertainment value or cool. But rob robbing is wrong. Killing is wrong. Just because you can have, you can have, you know, three bullets flying across like one of those action flick shot doesn't mean make it right. Yeah. Just because it's cool, it's action, it doesn't make it right. So something like that. And of course, towards someone who actually doing good good deeds, we must also support them by words, by you know, actions, not um color them with, you know, I mean, uh not not how to say laugh at them uh, or make it appear as a, a joke. So this is like upside down in a sense. <clears throat> So we can see from, you know, like in school or something like that, everyone's, when someone's trying to, you know, actually trying to do the right thing, say maybe, you know, helping, helping out after work, after school, helping out teachers or some, some people might say this is teacher's pet, something like that. So there's a fine balance, okay, in there. But just because you don't like, you know, to work extra hours or you don't like to, um, uh, exert more force than you need in your work doesn't mean that people who actually genuinely want to help is uh, it's not good. You know, you have to, you have to respect that. You know, you have to respect. Like ultimately, I mean, we need to allow a uh, foster environment where it's it's a uh, kind, it's caring. It, everyone's willing to give a bit of their time, their their money, their time to help each other. That's the kind of society you want to live in, right? Right now, you may be in your uh, you know prime time. You know, where you are powerful or maybe you are uh, handsome, beautiful or, you know, popular or wealthy or something like that. But when you, you know, nothing lasts forever. You know, people will age, wealth will go away, will flow away. One COVID is all it takes. Look at all the shops closing up. And all it takes is that one issues, one problem, one crisis to take all this away. So this is impermanence, what Buddha said. And everyone wants to be supported during their downtime. During their when they are down, in term, or when they are on the you know lower, um, when they fall to bottom, uh, out of their life, you know, where things are just not working out, and it's terrible. So to do that, you need to plan the good karma of you know being kind to others when you're at the prime. Only then, when you age, when you fall out of favors with whatever the, the company is or something and you lose your wealth and position, you still have someone taking care of you because of your kindness. People will flock to you or we, we, we'll take care of each other. So always remember that. So what is right? All right. Respect it, um, promote it, even use your action to, um, you know, to show to others, this is the right thing. And I would do that just because it's not cool or, you know, it doesn't mean uh, it's wrong. Okay. Don't use that worldly um, or don't use those uh, sensational um, sensational um, uh, topics or sensational sent, uh, sensational sentiments uh, 
sen- like don't don't follow the sensi- uh don't follow um what to say just don't follow the fat fad fat like uh, those temporal thing cool and awesome and something like that those are not permanent these things will go away they will die out all right and what is wrong is wrong it doesn't mean just because it's cool doesn't mean it's right okay it's wrong is wrong uh, you still can be cool while doing the right thing it actually makes you more cooler than those people who you know are doing silly stuff pranking people in the over the top way in a way that actually harms people so don't do that okay right is right wrong is wrong clear be clear about that and then on and then operate accordingly draw the line on that so this one is obviously saying tian dao upside down things are not going in the in the way it should be it's not reasonable it's not fair so further analyzing uh, people with real cultivation real you know insight real wisdom um and they are good people real good people um they have wisdom and this wisdom can be shown through the way they understand what is actually beneficial what is actually harmful in long run what is really we're not saying that we should be be blind to you know cause and benefit you know these things we need to know what is actually beneficial what is actually harmful what is actually good what is actually bad you need wisdom for that um in every single case have different um scenarios you know in, in for the judge they need to know um the, what is the merit what's the fault in order to pass on the sentences how heavy is the sentences so does your own life you know if you have a right standard then you understand this habit you should not indulge too much this is wrong even though it's fun you know it's cool yeah i'm talking about myself now it's i know it's fun to have play games or you know watch anime or watch tv until midnight and not sleeping but it's not right because you may be late for your duty next day or for your work for your you know uh the sessions um where everyone's waiting to share their their good the thoughts in this session or you know where tempers are waiting for you to uh, chant so don't so so just don't do it in the first place something like that so this is wrong i don't want to do it i know that i really like this thing i'm just going to hold it back until this important events over something like that prioritization so this is what this set for sentence is about so back to the um analysis they have so a person with real wisdom a good person with real wisdom uh they will know what is right what is wrong what is uh real what is false um, because the importance of understanding your priorities you know, or and and the where the where you draw the line against what is wrong is uh, for one person it um it shows what kind of character you are it shows that what path you're walking on your life trajectory are you going towards downward spiral or are you going upwards you know towards a better and better better state of mind physically materially and also mentally spiritually improve yourself better and better everyone wants that so don't do something that's wrong because you will go down like if you don't believe in those uh, hell or goals or anything just in this life alone i have plenty of uh, example i can use that right in this just life alone people can just ruin their life wasting wasting away in drugs and money and all that this are obvious thing isn't it so you you want to have a better life you got to have disciplines you got to have to stop indulging in something that is not right uh the habits that you know say if you want to have uh cut down your weight so you can't just eat, keep eating uh on a like tiramisu every day or you can't keep eating those cream biscuits although it's so tasty you have to cut it down so and you have to force yourself to exercise and all that so this kind of thing you know priority what is right what is wrong based on what you what you go so, and so does um you know in your career if you want to be really good at business very good in your field you got to have to you know let let the comfortable out of the you have to get out of the comfortable zone we all had we all say that comfort zone it's uncomfortable to learn something new to be unsure uncertain you got to have to push yourself out and and then obviously this one is more on the moral side but we can also use that in our in our uh, everyday life judgment you know like just because the society thinks that this kind of policy is okay does not mean it's right just because everyone says so doesn't mean it's right right if you follow your 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 conscience you know killing is wrong no matter what form 
I'm not going into it because it might cause a lot of arguments, but all forms of life, you know, all forms of killing is wrong, no matter what is, uh, no matter uh, what the reason is, whether it is a human form or not yet the human form. It's killing, and killing is wrong, especially your your own flesh and blood. Just because the law and legal and the modern thinking is like that does not mean it's right. Wrong is wrong. You can't stop them, but you you cannot condone condone it. You can stay silent, stay quiet, don't talk about it because you still have to understand. You still have to live your career. You have to have your livelihood. If you voice out too much, they will push you because it's against the tide of the world right now. You might get you know isolated, even worse, fired, and all that. So don't don't say anything. So anyway, back to this. Towards a person, this is how important it is to know what is right and wrong. Towards a town, a community, small community, it um, it relates to the welfare of the people of the community. If the leader of the or this whole community does not understand what is right, what is wrong, or does not actually discern the right from wrong, or uh, uh, avoiding the harm and actually going to something that is beneficial towards the community in the long run. Uh, if they don't do that, they don't know about that, then they will. They are in for a hell of a car crash on their own. Uh, they're in for a ride. And um, worst case, they might, you know, dissipate. So community can be in form of company, can be in form of um, a township, can be in form of like even our temples. These are communities. Everyone needs to have their priority right. Uh, what's their um, consensus? You know, uh, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable? And based on that, they navigate, they operate based on that one. So to a country, it's even more important, it's even more obvious. The bigger it is, the more obvious it is. You know, if someone thinks waging war to achieve that objective is good, just because uh, I kill a few people, I can object, uh, if I achieve my objective, uh, or maybe, you know, scaring off my rivals or trying to create a buffer zones or, you know, just because, uh, you know, uh, other countries um, leader, they lose their election and run to my country and ask for help. That doesn't mean it's, it's right to wage a war uh, unnecessarily. You kill your own people, you kill other people. Same thing. Waging a war in the name of, you know, some righteous name is not the right thing to do. Uh, if anything else, this should be just defensive instead of invasive. We all know that, but how many people actually follow it? And how many people actually use, you know, just and good as a real principle? It's always calculative. It's always self-interest. It's always maximizing self-interest. Things like this. Tell me what kind of self-interest it is if you have to uh, harm yourself so much in terms of financial, in terms of actual real life of your citizen in order to achieve an objective that is so vague, so abstract, and after 20 years, it, it, it gains nothing. It only, the, the, the thing you try to prevent in terms of terrorists or you know drugs or anything, it gets more rampant. It doesn't solve a problem and it harms yourself. Is there even a self-interest, right? So this, these are the kind of importance of having the right, right way of thinking. Otherwise, it's just gonna, it's just gonna hurt more people yourself and others. First thing is yourself, definitely yourself first, and then others. So it's important from one person to a whole nation, to a whole world, you know, the mindset of development, the mindset of, you know, environment, you know, like taking care of environment is a mindset, right? If you just exploit, exploit, exploit without having um, long-term thinking, like I can do it smartly. I don't have to do it so brutal, uh, uh, so crudely, you know, like, um, the way we extract, the way we use these resources of the earth, we should use it wise, wiser. These things are easy on paper. We can use the air. Look at the UN, they talk about all this, the development goal and all that. I, I studied that in uni. And we all talk about, okay, what actually happened? <laughs> what actually happened, right? Obviously, it's good. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. Like Master Ching Kong went to the UN under the, uh, with the ambassador. You know, try to bring up importance of harmonies among religions to bring in, you know, uh, guide the uh, bring religion back to educations. Those are the right thing, the just thing. It takes time to grow into the real 
actionable consensus. Right now, it's just we sit down and understand what it is, and then slowly, slowly, you move on. Because when things get big, like in the world scale, you need to take time. So does our you know environment protection and all that. Obviously, it's it's far from complete. But what is right must be done. Right, just because you're uh, just because there are a few, uh, not few, there are quite a, a lot of these um, rich mogul with um, deep pockets trying to you know lure away the parliament, lure away the congress from doing the right thing, does not stop uh, the fact that this thing has to be done. Otherwise, collectively, everyone's going to suffer in the long run. So it's not easy, but. What is right is right. What is wrong is wrong. This has to be there. Doesn't matter how powerful that person is. Karma is above them. Karma is always important. Always. That's why. That's why karma is important. Doesn't matter you believe it or not. You are still on Earth, right? If you're on Earth, you are gravity's law. You cannot leave gravity. Doesn't matter you do believe the world is flat or the world is round. You are bound by gravity right now. So does us. Six realms. You're bound by karma. Even outside six streams, Buddha, Bodhisattva, they are, they are not they They also have to follow the law of karma in order to educate and guide everyone. Law is law. doesn't matter you, how rich you are. You, the reason you're rich is because you do the right thing in the past life. You do the just and good thing. That's why you're rich and powerful. However, because you lost, you forgot what you did when you were reborn in this life, you thought, I can get away. I can use all these hard-earned merits and to do something that is actually harming yourself. Meritoriously harming yourself physically, mentally. So, in the end, who is the fool? Right? In the long run, but even in now, right now, you know, you, li- you will live easier if you do the right thing. doesn't matter your peer, how, how the peer is going. Because this is a, in the Sutra, in Final Life Sutra, Buddha already said, this is a world of messed. You know, that's why when you can maintain a pure heart, mess. I just use that word. Uh, it's a mess, basically. The world is a mess. That's what Buddha said. He didn't say it in a very sad way. He's just like, it is a mess. So, what kind of mess? You know, short life. Life is, lifespan is not long. You think 100 is long? Come on. In According to the to the medical um, cert, uh, out of the medical journal from Huang Di back in a long time ago, humans are supposed to live up to 200 years old. It's unbelievable because no one actually lives up to that. Their heart is so polluted. Uh, the way they eat, the way they act, everything is exerting energy unnecessarily. Obviously, will a lot of wandering thoughts instead of maintain purity. Because of course, you shorten your life. You use more energy like battery, right? If you use too much, of course, your battery will be shorter. Of course, it's another thing if you use your energy to serve people. That's conversion, small energy into large energy. Okay, that's different. So back to the point. There's a story of a man from Song Dynasty. He goes by the name Mr. Yi, Yi Si Lu. I'll go short on that one because I already mentioned that in the last sessions. Uh, but here, I'm just going to re- revise it. Mr. Yi of Song Dynasty, he um, is a very uh, uh, a man of principle. He has a very clear line, clear rules, clear boundaries. Everyone works with him, respect him because of that. He do not turn back on his words, nor did he allow anyone trespassing the lines. So, how about go, go qie? In the Chinese word, go qie. What it means, go qie might mean is they don't just muddy up you know, like maybe it's grey or not. No, right is right, wrong is wrong. So everyone respect him because he will not turn back his back on any people. When you don't agree, he don't agree in front of your face. You don't have to worry he will do something in your back. That kind of people is always easy to deal with, isn't it? You don't have to think too much. All right, it's just being at ease. Because that man is he put everything on his face. He don't he don't he don't try to, you know, do some tricks or something. So this person is a very Clear cut person. What is right, what is wrong. I don't like, I don't like, I like, I like. Clear. And everyone respects him. So, this kind of virtues he have cultivated, you know, of honesty, of integrity. What does he, in, um, what does it crystallize into? So, at the very end of his life, 
um, he was in the same era as Mr. Fan. A lot of Chinese might have heard Mr. Fan Zhong Yan, a very famous Song Dynasty um, uh, minister. Uh, he's a very good person as well. Uh, he is very just, very right. Uh, and he's, um, what to say, he's very generous. He all, he um, donated a lot of his uh, government because he was up, he, he worked up to the level of prime minister. Uh, he was um, donating the money to his own <coughs> communities back in his birth of birthplace to build schools and everything because back then the norm is everyone, if you're in a high position, you probably would just enjoy luxurious food, luxurious residence, but he lives like a normal citizen, like a common people, common the peasants, live like a peasants, um, live like a common folks, basically. So it's very respectful. People, person of his caliber, of, of his status, live like a normal person. It's a, it's educational. It's just inspiring. So this person will very admire Mr. Fan, very admire Mr. Yi. I think Mr. Yi is like great, his grandfather age, you know, to Mr. Fan. Mr. Yi is like grandfather in a sense. <clears throat> so when he passed away, he wrote a letter before that. Mr. Yi wrote a letter to Mr. Fan to say goodbye. Like, hey, I'm going now, bye. And so Mr. Fan just immediately, you know, rushed to his home when he received the letters. But at the time, he already washed himself, Mr. Yi washed himself, and he sat on the um, main courtyard. If you know the Chinese home, there's Si He Yuan, uh, four walls, and then and there's a big courtyard, and there is this ancestral hall remembrance. I believe he might be sitting in there uh, with a, such a dignified look and then he was closing his eyes he appears serenely passing away so he has passed away but peacefully so obviously mr fan seeing his um, role model pass away he cries in front of him and very sad however mr yi suddenly opened his eye and talked to him and say didn't i already say goodbye to you in a letter well, you don't have to come here right everyone has to die everyone what when there's life there's death this is, no, he didn't say everyone has to die. He said, when there's life, there's death. Right? Didn't you know? If there's life, there's always death waiting. Anyway, so back to the point. There, there's life, there's death. This is a, 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 a law that cannot be refuted. Didn't you know? After you finish, he's like, bye. And I just go. He passed away. Just like that. Sounds similar, right, to all the, the you know, those um, aunties and uncles or grandma and grandpas who turn army to force and then pass away. Such a way, man. What a way to go. So he, now he know that this person knows what is right. So this is the merits of knowing what is right and what is wrong. Your heart is clear. Your mind is clear. Your wisdom is growing. Mentally, spiritually, even materially, it will. Everything's, there is a book called The Secret. I keep hearing it. I think it's very famous. It exactly says the same thing as Tai San Pian, this book. It, you attract what you are. You know, the things you attract uh, shows the kind of person you are. Right? Um, you know, you only attract uh, things that have a connection with you. You know, magnets can only attract metals because it has the metallic properties. Um, so same, same goes for person, your friends, your work, your... Um, wealth and all that, what kind of person you are, you, you will receive based on that merit alone, right? In Elfan, he mentioned that if a person is supposed to have uh, millions of dollars of gold, he will have millions of dollars of gold, worth of gold in his um, life to spend, to use. If he's worth thousands of dollars, he will only have thousands of dollars in his life. Still good, still can survive. And if you have is this person supposed to pass away by hunger, you know, die by famine? This person will die by famine in his life. That's the basic understanding of, um, you know, uh, you, you attract who, what you are. And obviously it can be changed. Um, but the point here right now, we are not trying to go into the fun route now. We're just trying to say, um, knowing what is right or wrong is very important. And first step is to know. Then, you know what to do. First is to know, then to do. Uh, otherwise, it's like blind people trying to walk on the street without any guide. It's, you can't. You can't reach your destination. 
because you can't see it. To know is to see. And then you walk after you see it. So that's it. Second part of it, to foolishly align oneself with evil people and avoid good people. So this is supposed to be um, one sentence, but each, each phrase has its own meaning. So this one talks about um, more on the people. First part is talk about matters or, you know, um, judgment of certain things. But this one goes more into a people. So, you know, we're supposed to go and join good folks, you know, with people who actually have positive influence on you or improving you. Obviously, we need to do the same. We need to be that person in order to attract crowd group like this. Um, but in this case, why is this a crime and offenses in karmic terms? Is because when you're supposed to be stay away from those trouble folks, you know, those um, troublesome people, uh, people who cause commotions or commit crimes or commit, um, how to say, it, commit um, unwholesome acts, deeds, might not be legally classified as crime, but, you know, maybe it's um, uh, double faced, all that kind of bad habits, or, you know, trying to provoke gossip, provoke. Um, hatred between two people, two uh, or husband and wife, or families, or friends. Those kind of folks, you need to stay away from them. All right? You should go towards people who are actually, uh, you know, um, honest into, uh, into, uh, with integrity, uh, people you, who, who, who is open, open-hearted. Um, good people, basically. So that's the basic understanding of it. So why, why did he mention it here? All right? Because this... Uh, concerns um, your life, your whole life, you know, uh, how you lead your life. Um, mixing in with wrong folks, you know, even though you might not know at the time, can have detrimental sequence, consequences to you. And um, obviously, when you were young and naive, parents are a very, a very important deterrent. Another level is good friends are a very important deterrent against these kind of things from happening. It's an example, just drugs. You don't have to talk, say something so abstract. It's drugs, just itself. People who you mix in with the crowd, all it takes is one sip, and then you keep going, keep going, keep going. That's it. You're done. And uh, how? And and look at how hard the people at the rehabilitation center are trying to get them out, and how hard they themselves have to like the kind of psychology trauma they have to go through, or this the kind of hurdle they have to go through psychologically to get out of it. So this this is something, you know, once you're not aware and you fell into that loop, it's very hard to get out. In Chinese, there's a one, there's a saying called uh, losing your footing uh, even for milliseconds. You might have a lifetime of regret waiting for your hate. Or one millimeter, one milli, milliliter of mistakes done. Sometimes, at the crucial moment, that one millimeter mistakes, you know, the the choice that you made at that moment, based on the fair and just conscience, or based on your self des your desire, your desire for the last wealth, your you know, um, desire to be to be respected, to be admired, to be comfort, uh, for comfort. Those kind of desire against what is actually do the right things, what is actually beneficial to everyone. If you make the choice, make a wrong one wrong move at that moment, you have a lifetime regret to, to deal with. You know, you might lose someone very important, or you might completely lose the trust of someone you loved, something like that. Just because of that one moment of, you know, temptation to be enjoyed, to enjoy indulge. So it's very important to have good friends. Buddha always say, It's very important to have good friends. Friends who are virtuous, virtuous friends. And he even lays out the virtuous friends' um, benefits. You know, the 10 benefits of virtuous friends. Buddha always like that. He always gives you a very clear number. 10 numbers. Right, the ten meritory, uh, the ten merits of uh, non-killing, the ten merits of non-stealing, and then the ten 
karma or the ten consequences of committing adultery, stuff like that. 妻不忠贞，女不贞良 ，something like that. Like your wife will not be faithful to you. Your daughter will not be、um, respected by her peers when she's grown up. Something like that. If you commit adultery, stuff like that. So back to here, this case, same thing. Importance of a good friend is very important because parents cannot always look at after you. Once you're grown up, even now, like teenage age, no, even now at home, you have you have computer. Computer has a lot of things coming on. If parents are not guarding it properly, the internet. I mean, internet guarding it properly, they might got you know hooked up by someone with ill intention. You know, lure them out. Yeah, as you can see, a lot of scam. So it's very important to、um, guard, protect、uh, yourself and your family against that, or your friends. So always mix in the good people. Otherwise, the、um, consequences is lifetime of regrets. In this case, they bring up examples.、Um, these are all like the old Chinese, I mean, ancient China's、um, examples. The courtship, the not courtship, sorry, sorry, the court, the politics in the court, imperial court. You know, I don't like this. He don't like me, and then, and then that guy was like choosing a wrong side, and then he just got killed. Something like that, or he he sided with someone who are not as virtuous, and then end up doing all the dirty work for him. Sounds like a good movie you can make, mafia movie or something. The Godfather. Anyway, um, so yeah, and and then he got you know he got killed by the emperor at the end because of his um deeds, wrong uh bad deeds, and then got caught out. Uh, the boss that he relies on lose his power. Yeah. But this、um, example is not too strong. Like、right? they, they, they did mention about Wang Anshi. Right? This very important, very famous in Song Dynasty. He、uh, has a reform going on. It might be good in our eyes, but back in their society, it's too radical, and people just can't take it.、Uh, it might cause a lot of unrest. The the kind of law he implement might be、um, sound sensible to us. Like you know, take doesn't matter、uh, your study or non study. Uh, doesn't matter you scholar or common folks like farmers, you all have to pay tax. So yeah, it makes sense. But back then, it's、uh, the structure of the society. You know, everyone respects the scholar. Partially, is mainly is because they are virtuous people. Most of the time, most of them, if anything, they are well learned, well educated people. We even now we always, you know, like to align ourselves with people who are well educated, eloquent, and. Uh, well mannered, but um, back then he's trying to implement. This is one of the law he he has trying to overcome, uh, trying to improve in in place, but unwisely he put it, he forced it down on the people, and the emperor was like, "It sounds good on paper. It's always good on paper. If it's not good on paper, they don't you won't pass through the 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 approval of the higher ups. The thing is, when you implement implement things, it has to be done with." Clemency you have to do, you have to be done with you know a lot of consideration of the societies at the moment. You have to be compassionate. That's the whole point. Compassionate. You have to use compassion and and to implement it slowly. You know, that do not disrupt people. If they already plan ahead one year back then a crop, you know they're trying to plan if the 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 Lord above, you know the heavens are not punishing them. Nourish them with rains and、uh, bountiful harvest.、Um, then they will have enough to stay for this winter. Then suddenly you go come down with this law and then tell them you all have to pay tax and I have to apply thirty percent on everyone else overnight. Of course they will be rebellion. Of course, right? Suddenly you know you work hard, you save up a few thousand dollars per week、uh, per fortnight for uh, uh, pay. And then suddenly your governments change and come and say, "Hey, you have to pay fifty more percent on top of that." Of course, you rebel. So something like that. So don't. Um, in this case, is evil does not necessarily mean bad in a Disney villain kind of way. It's people who are not wise, people who are not um, let's say not 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 using the right set of mind when they do things. But we call it bad. Why? What? what how do you define bad? Against your conscience, against what is fair, what is reasonable. All right, what's good on paper doesn't necessarily mean it's fair and reasonable straight away. 
you have to understand the needs of the people every day. I'm talking about those because this is about part two, right? Transgression with easily communicated with people authority. That means you're in charge of people, in charge of many people's life. Right? Even nowadays, you might not have the, the, the old hierarchies. You still have hierarchies. You're still in the high place. If you become a general manager, you become a CEO, the sort of law you implement, you have to think about it thoroughly as much as you can before you put it in place and then let them organically grow into this. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of resistance or end up harming people. Same for government, same for a temple, same for any organization. Right? The bigger it is, the more they have to think about. So in this case, always be reasonable. That's what we call good people. Reasonable, fair, all right? follow the rules. Uh, also be, um, uh, when there is a, a cause for clemency, mercy, be merciful. When there's need to be stern and strict, be strict. You know, evil people is Kuang Wang, it's people without restraint, crazy, mad, and, and, and they, they do things, you know, unreasonably and in a way that harms people, right? There are also good people who act like crazy people, but that's like Ji Gong, they always like Bodhisattvas appears, that's different. They try to educate people, get out of their mind, their, their how's it, lock, bubble, mindset. You know, this is good. Like what Liao Fan mentioned in his story about people messing, uh, people looking only on the surface. All right, that's education, guys. Um, here I'm talking about really bad people, like people who actually just kill without reason, like back in the, the warlords in Africa, or you know, or people who in in the civilian settings who does not care um, about the actual needs of the uh, the subordinates. They will mention in the next chapter. They, in order to get their KPI, they're willing to even you know sacrifice lives or sacrifice the well-being, welfare of its people for it. Selfish. So that's what we call evil people. Just use the, the two words. Is it fair? Is it reasonable? That's it. Okay. All right. Yeah. There we go. That's the topic. I was right to leave it into two sentences. Otherwise. There won't be enough time. So um, this is the last part. So the first half of the last part is xia Qigong. A very literal translation is you torture the subordinate in order to get your um, merits, get your rewards. But in this case, it might, might not be torture, sacrifice, or at the expense of. That's what it actually means. You get your reward, your praise or whatever, your promotion at the expense of the well-being, of the interest of your own subordinates, people who are in your charge, in your in your care. It's not supposed to do that, right? The burden of leadership is you always have to put others first. Otherwise, you are evil people. That's it. That's how simple it is. All right. It's not saying that you should not pursue your well-being, your self, your freedom to you know choose and all that. But when you're in charge of someone, that's when priorities needs to be reconfigured. Otherwise, don't take that responsibility. All right. That I'm going to the Spider-Man route. With great power comes great responsibility. It's true though. It's true because you can't. The and if you didn't go through your mind, if you didn't. Think it through when you implement certain policies. Remember, this the context is people easily commit this when they're in high place, when they're in high position. So it's very important for us to think about it as well, even as a parent, even as a elder brother, something like that, or even as someone in in a in authority to in regard to others, police. So to. Over here, the literal translation is to while holding power in office, sacrifice the lives, interests, and welfare of the people or subordinates for the attainment of personal honors, KPI, guys, KPI, career success, KPI. For instance, a judge increasing penalties or a persecutor overcharging to appear tough on crimes. So that, that happens. All, uh, rules must be done with, you know, like, Reasons always have to be in reasons, re in, re in the bounds. You cannot um, 
do things at the expense of other people. You have to minimize it. Um, if anything else, you should put out part of your benefits in order to you know, keep everyone afloat. There's a story in, um, I think, back in the 80s when Japan economy was in a bubble burst. Um, obviously, there are bad examples of the company practice, malpractice in Japan, but also a good example of the Confucius ideas they have implemented in their society. CEO step down or CEO cut half of their, even CEO cut half of their one, 100 million after cutting half is also 50 million. So that's more than enough. So what I'm saying is they take a lot of their, uh, they cut off their bonus or their remuneration and then circulate it in the company system to keep those um, workers fed I mean, through the salary. Uh, give them the salary using his own cuts, uh, cutting from his own benefits. It's very not easy to do that. And there are CEO doing that, you know, during the hard times back in the 80s. So these are the good example. There is the opposite of this, you know, trying to keep everyone afloat, trying to keep them as much as you can in your power. If anything, you know, you if you have no, no, power, no financial power in this way, you can help them through your connections, you know. If you're in a high position, you most likely you have a wide connections. Trying to get them somewhere, or trying to create a system where they can portal, where they can go to reach someone else, something like that. Help them. Uh, make sure they they can survive. Yeah, get by. So that's the basic decency as a leader. Not not saying that uh, you know it's noble and or it's the basic decency. It's a, it's a duty. If you're in charge of someone, if you're given that level of responsibility, that's what you should be doing. Doesn't matter how much you paid, you are in charge of them until you're not. All right. These are in uh, public settings. But even in private, like even even when you finish your office, people will still respect you if you do the right thing. They will be like, oh, this man helped me before. So in the long run, you are not at a loss. Doing good does not mean that you have to you know uh you know sulk and have to you know of course you have to you know you still you have compared to people who can just say i don't care you know i'm done i'm out of this office i don't give a damn they can do that they can use that kind of attitude but tell trust me people will hate this person and if that person is crashed by a car or some issues obviously they will still help them because out of because they are good people all right but no one will like no one will respect this kind of person Right. Be a person who you want to be. No one wants to be, you know, um, boo when they finish their work. You know, they want, they want, uh, they want to do a good job, and they want to um, have an ease on their conscience at the end of the day. You know, have no, no stain on their conscience. You know, they were like, at the end of the day, I did what I need to do. I did what I have to do, and um, how to say, some of them might not be right, but I made the decision based on my conscience based on the protocol at the time, I do my best and trying to preserve the welfare of my subordinates and also the people in my jurisdiction. So you want to be like that. You know, at least a closure for yourself. You don't want to leave some scar forever in your heart. In the other hand, talk about back in World War Two, those old Japanese soldiers that tortured civilians, killed a lot of uh, innocent women and all that, Comically, I understand there's karma behind. But what I'm saying is what appears in World War II, those old soldiers, a lot of them were not punished, obviously. They are, they are on the orders of the high ups. But, you know, there's a lot of them the, in the old age nowadays because they were in power, position of authority, and they didn't do a job well to preserve. They were not educated in that anyway. They were fanatics, like a, like a fanatics when they were educated. They were educated to just treat them like non-human, sort of like animal. So that's also a poor, poor military discipline on their part. But what I'm saying is, um, at the at their old age, when they're back in Japan, and they, even though they were not punished, they are psychologically punished every day. And when they die, you understand that there's a lot of things waiting for them as well. If you can see as what Bodhisattva Siddhartha can see, 
you won't have no hate over, over them because so much pain is waiting. You will not wish this on your enemy. But back to the point here is, as a military soldier, um, as a police officer, police officer, so much power abuse and all that as well. And also as the as the politician in office, you know, in charge of the, uh, in, you're in high government, you, you're in charge of people. You, you need to be very careful. Something like that. So over here, there's a beautiful metaphor. When a candle meets the darkness of the night, the candle suddenly has the merits. Merits of what? Illumination. Merits of being bright. That's it. Just by itself. When the boat receives the buoyancy of the water, such a scientific word. So when the boat has the buoyancy of the water, it becomes suddenly becomes from a piece of wood, becomes a tool to carry. It has a merit of carrying stuff, transporting cargo and human across a distance. So everything has its own uses when the time is come. Why do we say that? Why do they say that? Because everyone's trying to, you know, have, if you want to advance in your life, you need to have merits. You need to have meritorious deeds, you know. And you need to show that you have merits in order for them to consider. But if you do that in an underhanded way, in a way that, you know, sacrifice the well-being of your subordinates, your families, or your friends, or people who trusted you, all you're going to get is a hard cold number. And that thing's not going to last. When things review in the, under the sun, you know, in, in, when, when the reality comes out, everyone's going to, gonna, you're in for an earful, not more than that, you're in for a hearing. So this won't last. So over here, this metaphor tells you everyone has their uses. You were born here with your own uses, missions, and your own pros and cons, your own um, advantage and disadvantage. And then what you do is trying to, you know, work your way through your disadvantage, improve it, or find someone to compensate it. And also use your advantage to help people and to improve your capability, competencies, so that you can help even more people. There's always, must be always the goal. That there must be the goal. You can have pursuit of your own wealth, your own fame, but it has not, it cannot overwrite the objective of helping people. Because this is a society, you, you contribute. So over here, same thing. Candles have its own merits when it meets the light, night. If it's on the day you put on candle, everyone's like, what? It's just not the right time. Does not mean it, the candle is useless, right? You don't feel the use of the candle because it's very bright. There's sun, but the sun will not always shine forever. It will become nighttime. And that's when candle has its merit. So you also have your own time. That's what I try to say. You have your own time. When your time comes, you will be able to use your strength to serve that purpose. All right. To be honest, everyone in their life, uh, they feel the best when they are needed the most. When they are, how to say, uh, using their talents or capabilities, their experience in service of others. It's always the best feeling in the world because you're actually sharing it with the world instead of you know keeping to yourself. Obviously, you need to accumulate it. You need to grow it and sharpen it, get it better and better. This is how it should be. You know, you accumulate a lot, but you spend it a little bit. When time is right, everything comes out in the right way. Just like the candle, just like the boat. With right condition, you will shine. You will have your merits uh, done. You will have your merits. You will have your KPI. So don't rush it. Don't try to fight with the sun if you are a candle. Wait till the night falls. Then you have your merit. Everyone will appreciate you. All right. So you have your own time. We have our own time. Don't worry. All right. As long as you don't divert from the path, you'll be fine. So back to to a more, you know, real life example. As an army, as a military commander, your job is to discipline your army, all right? Even nowadays, you have foreign expeditions outside the law of your country, 
right? In that sense, in a sense, you are kind of a lord to yourself at that moment. Yes, you have all the protocol, but they can't see it. So it takes a lot of discipline to hold ourselves back, to restrain in the face of, you know, maybe a lot of provocations from the locals, uh, militarily or non-militarily, you know, violent or non-violently. You need to restrain, and you also need to restrain your subordinates. And, and this needs a lot of um, mental strength, as much as your physical proudness. So if an army, if a general, obviously still happens outside our eye, more in, in more in the backwater uh, places, or more in the places with less jurisdictions, less controls, you know, less civilian control. So like those um, warlord area where drugs were rampant and all that. Obviously those are criminals. We don't expect them to be disciplined. But as a disciplined army inside a place where there's no very few laws and all that, expect to be fair and reasonable as well. You know, do not harm the locals' livelihood. Do not, that's very simple. Like, do not invade people's home. Do not touch people's belongings. It might seem simple, right? But when, trust me, when this, this whole consensus of law and order falls apart, you can imagine how many people are doing that. Look at South Africa. That, that looting of the store, department store and all that. It warrants a it warrants a lot of a militia of nation uh, local militia to to guard against this kind of uh, looters. So the point is, all right. Um, obviously, this is a bit off topics. What I'm trying to say is, um, to maintain a law and order is very important, and to maintain discipline in your own troops is very important as a military your commander your job. All right. There's also a story of Islam, uh, Islamic, uh, because we talk about multi faith understanding. Let's have another multi-faith understanding, especially the one that is mostly misunderstood. You know, the, the Prophet Muhammad himself, when he started this uh, expedition against the uh, Mecca, the Holy Land, their Holy Land, the, the place where they um, have their Haji every year. I went from, from Malaysia. Like, I, know, I'm aware, I was made aware of it. So, um, the Prophet Muhammad, he has a very simple rule when he started to try to occupy it. Um, I think the uh, Mecca or Medina, one of the place, one of the two holy places. They're all in Saudi Arabia. So when he go back, you know, when he has followers, he have arms and all that, he's uh, basically a general, military commander. And he, when he march in, you know, give a march order, march into the city of Mecca or Medina. My apologies to Muslim friend out there if I got it wrong. So basically his rule is very simple. Do not touch belongings of the local inhabitants. Leave their protect their properties and life, right? Keep that bottom line. Anyone do that, immediate punishment. No, no quarters taken. You will get punished directly by death or execution. I don't know. So that creates a sense of discipline and respect. And the kind of law of order, this kind of looters and everything. When they saw that, they were not there to do anything. This is the function of an army. This is the candle. That meets the night. I'm not saying that as a as a as a human in this world, you should not have arms and protect yourself, especially in the context of the United States. What I'm saying is, you should use that to protect your your loved ones, not to use that to shoot up the young pe- pe- people. People, you have you need to have discipline. That's how precious it is. Discipline is so precious. So that's why they gain a lot of followers. Back to the Prophet Muhammad. Everyone respected because he's not like one of those generic uh, baron, you know, generic lord. I'm talking about pure military perspective, right? Let's move out the religious part of the way. Just as a person himself, he has shown a good example, leadership, a lot in Chinese history as well, of self-restraint, self-discipline. And this gains respect from everyone else. Uh, he did not you know, sacrifice the lives, interests, and welfare of the people under his power, under his control. Instead, he protect their life and property. He negotiate, and he, um, you know, allows trade and all that, you know, open up, quite quickly normalize the situation. This is a function of a military. It's supposed to be like that. And he did that, and of course, he gained respect, and everyone would listen to his teaching. Right? So, if you look at our own Buddha as well, he's 
not a military commander, but he has the presence of many, many people who has a lot of power. All the kings, all the, all the big generals, big ministers, you know. Why did he listen to him? Because he's shown restraint, disciplined towards his students. If his students was in argument with others, he always tell them, right, you should not be cur. You know, I already told you, right? No angers. So, like, even other people being rude and all that, you know, do not allow your anger. Do not be a slave to your anger first. Because before you even talk to them, you already are a slave to your anger when you react angrily. So you must be liberated from their... Always direct back to your inside. Don't look on the outside. On the outside, when they see your demeanor so calm and chill, even though you're pointing a knife at them, suddenly they don't dare to do it. It's a psychology thing, mate, to kill. It's a psychology thing. There was a very famous um, story of a of a madman who cuts the finger of his um, people he killed. He has 100 fingers chained into the um, necklace on his neck. Everyone's fear of him. You know, everyone's, because he has, obviously, right, if your mind keeps thinking about killing people, obviously you look like a monster. He is a monster. And he's, he's a monster, he thinks like a monster, he keeps chopping people. One day when he reached Buddha, in front of Buddha, and the Buddha was just so calm and chill, he just can't kill him. He just can't bring himself to do that. And and then, I don't know, I forgot the story, but basically the Buddha just, um, without saying anything, it's just that aura, he just stop, stop killing. And he's like, um, how can you be so calm and chill? Everyone saw me, they scared before they, I, I chopped them off, uh, before I cut them down. They were scared to the very end, you know. They're scared senselessly. But you so calm, so normal, so peaceful. So he, it intrigues him. And so it begins. Buddha is trying to teach him. See, not just military commander, a person who can command his own army of thoughts, who gain respect from other people. Your own thought is your own army. Why, why, is it, why, why do we say that? Words can hurt people, isn't it? Words can help people, isn't it? So your word is your sword. Your word is your shoot, shoot. If you command your word, you command your, uh, you command your word like you command your sword, uh, command your word carefully, then you use that to heal people instead of hurt people, to defend people instead of harm people. This is what you should use your, uh, this is what you should discipline, you should use, apply discipline in, commanding your army of thoughts. Use it in the right way. And Bodhisattva is the one who has done that well and on the process of perfecting it like Buddha. And then apply outside, in your position, in your job and everything. You are an example, just by being yourself, because you already are disciplined. So over here, back to here, merits will come when the time is right. Do not rush it. Do what is needed at the moment. Don't do what is useless at the moment. Don't try to appear useful. Don't try to appear busy. I do not like the idea of that. Just be sensible. If you're busy, you're busy. If you're not busy, you're not busy. You can help other people when you're not busy. All right? That's it. Be clear. So, yeah, that's it. I think I'm uh, over time by five minutes. Um, so, these stories, um, you know, in a Chinese, there's a man, he has the... So, this is a very good example. Um... In Song Dynasty, the great general Cao Bing, when he attacked the um, Jiangnan province, south southern province of China, he did not sacrifice a life. He didn't ha even have to kill to con uh, to finish his military campaign of conquering the, uh, the the south China. So this is a remarkable achievement. Not not many general can do that. Obviously, it must be a right condition for him as well. And uh, Han Dynasty's uh, Mr. Ji An, Ji An. Thing. Anyway, Mr. G, to save someone, to save a people from famine, he's uh, willing to forge a signature, forge a order from the emperor. Guys, you know what it means, right? Forging a letter, an order from the emperor, immediate execution. Not just yours, might be your whole family as well back then. 
is willing to sacrifice one family to save thousands of family. And that one family is his own family. His own hate. So he did that. And he did that to open up the granaries. Because, you know, the they always have granaries from farmers. So right now, they open up to save thousands, tens of thousands of lives. Obviously, the emperor was like, yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, you do good in my name. You know, increase my rule. You can use that mindset, but it's, it's always good. All right, it saves lives. So, Han Dynasty's Mr. Yu, when he was the uh, one of the um, adju- adjutant to the um, to the court case, I don't know how to say Qing Wei. He's adjutant to a court case. Uh, every time he passed a sentence, the people whom he passed the sentence on always respect his decision. I am guilty, sir. I am very guilty, because he takes his work seriously. He don't muck around. He don't allow muddiness in his case. Take every leads, check to the very bottom of the leads, make sure it's clear that this person is guilty. Then you put, he put, us on the sentence. Before that, he was very careful, meticulous. Basically, do his job. He do his job. He become a candle in the dark night. Think of that. That's it. Just be a candle in the dark night. Don't try to be a person you are not. If you are a candle, don't try to fight against the sun. Just bite your time. Be be, be a better version of candle instead of uh, a candle that can last ten minutes, last twenty minutes, something like that. Okay. Be better. All right. All right. So I'm gonna stop here, and I will continue with. Uh, we're a bit slow than the. <laughs> the time control is not good when there's no. Um, We'll, 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 we'll push on for this on the next fortnight. Uh, thank you for um, thank you for uh, listening to this. Uh, hopefully, these few sentences, uh, examples I give, um, uh, it's clear enough uh, to t- tell us that it's 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 um, crime pays, and um, you know it. It might seem like we at disadvantage when we do good. Um, but it's ultimately you will get rewarded in many ways. You know there are many ways to have a good life. It does not necessarily mean you need to have appear as um, uh, wealthy or powerful. Those are very shallow way of thinking. It it has to be something like you live in a very comfortable place. You have your food on your table. You have your clothes you need it in winter, summer, autumn, spring. You have good friends you can trust it on. You have a Wife, husband, spouse, if you need to have spouse, then you have spouse, and you have children, if you wish to have children, even not, you, you can take care of uh, cousins and all that, or nephews, something like that. Good friends, good companions, you know, good job in, the, in the career wise, you are not, um, how to say, causing any conflict with other people, you are happy with everyone, you're doing your job, you are candle in the dark night. So that is one of the definition of good life, right? Doesn't have to be Warren Buffet or Bill Gates. How many of them are there? And they take tens, many lifetime to practice that. So they they sell, they reap what they sell. You reap what you sell. Do your thing, okay? Don't worry about others in a way. Don't don't overly concerned about what others doing. You just learn from the best role model because you only have twenty four hours a day. Your lifespan. It has a limit. Use that limit that lifespan to an unlimited future. That's what I'm trying to say. And first step is to understand don't step on the landmine. These are landmines. All right. Avoid landmines. Then you will be safe towards the end of your journey. Okay. All right. We'll end this here. Um, next time we'll continue. We'll speed up a little bit. Uh, this one I haven't been taught haven't been um, shared to the youth group. So we're actually on spot. We're just one little sentence behind. Let's end this in uh, 10 times I'm in love for. Ah, me, ho, fo. 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 A mi to fo 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 me
may the merits and virtues accumulated in this Dharma talk um, be dedicated to the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of those in the three realms below. Uh, may those who see and hear of this aspire to be uh, uh, aspired to have a body heart together to be born in the land of ultimate bliss. <laughs>